very successful day. Trade is good. Let's have a look. Welcome to Sheep School. We're gathering sheep today. We've sale day on in two days time. We're selling some sheep in our main sale. This is my main pay day for the year. So we're heading to Roscommon. We've 70 sheep to pick out of this batch. We've 10 yo lambs and five rams. Gonna go through these now, get them picked out. Couple of wet days coming. Thing I'm gonna run them into the shed. That's what we're doing here this evening. So we have to get them across the road. Bit of help lined up. We'll get to it. We're just picking through these. I've alerts set up on my EID reader. On paper, I'm picking the best sheep out. So do that on the computer. Set an alert. You'll see it by scanning sheep here. So there's one there, sell. That's definitely sell. Another one, sell. Lovely. So I have to get 70 of these picked out. So we'll rattle through them here. So traits I use to pick my sheep for retaining include survivability or will to live, I like to call it. Ability to rear two lambs consistently every year. Now we're just diverting here. So you'll see me alert. Keep is going out this way and sale hoggets are in this side. Mammy's after ringing, dinner's ready. Better let them get back home now. Thanks for helping me boys. Okay. These are great boys. Donica is five. Oshin is two. two. And what age are you? Seven. Seven, are you sure? You don't seven. sound that sure. Eight, seven. Yeah, very good. Well, thanks for your help, boys. You're a great boy. Don't forget every school day is a sheep day. That's the boy. What are you saying? Yeah. That's the boy. What have you to say for yourself? If you want to be farmer, you have to be poor. Well, hopefully I'll not be poor after this, selling 70 hoggets. <laughs> we'll see. We'll hope the trade is good. Now, I need 70. So the 56 in this. Just gonna go back through the, this batch of keepers and we pick out maybe another 15 or 20 or so, just to have a few in reserve. Can't really bring it in with a sore foot, but don't see it with a sore foot at the minute. So uh, yeah, we'll go through these, we'll pick out it, and that's just not overly happy with the look of them. The alerts I set up was purely down to performance and some breeding, I would have looked quite a bit at the back breeding and rams and all the rest and quite a marked difference in the stock and that's purely on performance and figures so that's without any visual looks at all so you'll see these are much nicer tidier sheep so i'm just going to pick out the lesser maybe 10 or 15 and add them into this and it should improve the sheep that i'm keeping that little bit more Come on. There's a boy keen, keeping an eye on the ladies. Now we've got our keepers back in here. I'm just gonna kind of go through them manually and pick out maybe 10 or 15 that. On paper I want to keep them, but physically, if they're a little bit small or just not ones I like the shape of, I'll sell them as well. So let me know what you think. Do you see a notable difference? They seem a tidier bunch of sheep than maybe the ones that I've marked for sale. Yeah, Roberto. Let go. This is what we picked out. Not that there's anything wrong with them. I just, they're some of the lesser sheep from the batch of keepers so they'll make up the balance of the ones we want to sell it's a lovely little sheep there starting to wonder why i pulled her out but there we go she's going for sale so she'll make up the numbers oh and i had some comments about the wool here why is the wool lying here uh the simple answer is nobody wants it it's a total waste of my time delivering this wool anywhere because it's so far away so I'm just going to load it and I'll bring it back. It'll go on along with the manure or the dung. It's going to be spread in the fields. It's a shame, but there we go. So that's why it's here. Just didn't get time to do it, but will eventually. So these sheep, a lot of people are asking what they are. These are purebred clins. I'll put it up on the screen here. Uh, the word clin. 
They are a native breed to Wales, very maternal, hardy sheep. You'll notice actually my flock have very little feet trouble and it's not from all the time I put into treating feet or foot batting or anything like that. In actual fact, these hoggets have never seen a foot bat. I may have treated one over the winter with a sore foot, might have jagged her, but they've never seen a foot bat, even as lambs, no scald, thankfully. They've been out all winter and never seen a foot bat, so it's probably a testament to the breed, how hardy they are, very good in the feet, maternal, prolific, lots of milk, very good to cross with terminal rams to produce lambs for uh, the factories. So I'm running them as purebreds, so that means that I'm producing uh, these hoggets, these purebred hoggets, which I sell in our sales and a little bit of a premium for them. It's working for me because there's not very much work, work with these from weaning to sale time, few fluke doses over the winter, shear them in May, June, and that is about it. That's all the work I have to do with these hoggets. So look, you'll not double your money on them, but look, you'll do fairly well. So quiet breed as well. They're quite a docile breed, quite easy to manage. That's kind of why I started at them. I hadn't much in the line of handling facilities eight years ago, so uh, just suited me. Nice, quiet, cheap as well. Um, but yeah, designed probably for outdoor lambing, the lamb away themselves. So suit a lot of, you see some of the bigger flocks, especially in the UK. Quite a few big flocks here in Ireland of 500 plus running purebred clins. Uh, the suit big numbers where you haven't much time for pampering sheep. Uh, I certainly don't. Uh, pamper them too much. I'm going to get these home. The easiest thing is I'm going to get these home to the shed. Seems a bit crazy hauling them, but it's only a couple of kilometers back to the sheds. There's a terrible wet day coming tomorrow. It's going to do two jobs. It's going to keep them dry for the sale. So I keep them in the shed and it's easier for me working on them tomorrow. What we have to do now is match these up. So this is probably the trickiest part of this job. They have to be batched up in lots for entries into the sale. I usually sell mine in lots of five. So you have to kind of match them up in size and shape and the way they look. So they always sell a little bit better when you've them batched up. Almost like peas in a pod, nice uniform shapes. So a little bit of work in that, batching them out. Now we have our lots of five picked out. 70 sheep. 14 lots of five. Quite a bit of sorting out, you'll see it there in the video. Bit of wrestling, but I find these gates, you can see them here in the walkthrough feeder, very handy because when you're on this job, you can't really do it in a race with a diverter. It just doesn't work. You need to physically see the sheep to match them up. It's the only way I can do it. But here we are, so we have our first lot in. So this is the first pen of five in. Second pen of five in, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, and so on, down to 14. So the way we're kind of working is, best sheep in first. It's generally the way I do it in the sale, I think most people do. Put your best foot forward, as it were. Hit the ground running with some good sheep at the start. The next job is, we have to color code them. So we know them when we get to the mark, pick them out, put them into their individual lot. So we do that with a series of colors. Start with the brighter colours and work our way down to the darker colours. It's one of the few times you'll see me physically wrestling sheep. I'd rather be doing this in the race, but just can't really get the whole batches through the race to do them. So hands on wrestling here, but not be that down doing it. So this is the top, would say the top five pens here. And I'll just give you a look at the bottom five and let me know if you think I have made the right decision or have I just wasted a couple of hours penning these up. So this is, we'd say the second last pen. A little bit smaller. So that's my last lot of hoggets. So have I been wasting my time? It'll be interesting to see at the sale, do I actually get better money but the first pens I've picked out. You'll see actually some of these sheep have dirty enough bums. Now that was down to the rumen fluke. You might have seen that in the last video where we had rumen fluke. Totally unexpected. Rumen fluke can be a tricky one, but a particularly wet summer probably brought that on. 
Uh, left them a little bit dirty. No worms at all, according to the faecal egg count. Uh, purely rumen fluke. And we did use that oxyclozenide. Clean them up, nice and clean now, no scours. Nice and clean, but the remnants of the dirty tails are still there. So it's a pity we didn't know maybe a couple of months ago. And we could have been on top of it. The sheep could have been a bit cleaner. Not too bad. We might do a little bit of cleaning. Not feeling all that motivated. But what's next? Colour coded here. So the next job is they all have to be written up in their individual batch numbers. So each tag number has to be allocated to a lot number. So they're all, every tag in this batch of 70 sheep here has to be manually recorded into a book. So that dispatch docket then goes with the new farmer, the new purchaser, hopefully, hoping for a good trade. We'll see how it goes. So that's these ladies all sorted back out into the big pen, which seems mad. We get to the mart on Saturday, tomorrow, and we have to turn around and sort them all into individual pens again. But what do we do? We have to batch them into a big group for transport. So that's them sorted anyway. We've got a bit of hay. Look, I'm not sure if it's the right thing to do, running them into the shed. They'll probably look a bit empty on sale day, but at least it'll be dry. It'll be a little bit cleaner for traveling, transporting in the truck as well. Hopefully they'll be cleaner for the sale. So this is my yo lambs from this year. There's a batch of around about 220 lambs here. So I've decided to sell 10 in the sale along with the 70 hoggets. Never sold lambs before, just going to see how it goes. So the easiest way to do this is run them through the diverter. So we're just doing that here now, just picking out the biggest, tidiest lambs in it. Anything that's clean enough to sell, not dirty in the back end. Now we have these whittled down, so I have to pick about 10 out of this, two batches of five. So we'll get a look at them, see what we're willing to sell. Yo lambs batched up, two lots of five. So this ones with the yellow are what I think is my better batch of yo lambs. First time I've ever sold yo lambs in the sale, I've always kept them on as they were hoggets, like the main batch of sheep I'm selling. So just Dipping me toe in the water to see, am I maybe better get rid of them when they're a little bit younger, less time looking at them on the farm. We'll see what the sale brings. We'll see what prices we get for them. We can work it out from there. Head for the sale.
now Tom is my transport man. He's after bringing down 70 of the Hoggets meat. Fair play to him. I rang him the other day. 100%. Great job. Thanks, Tom. Fair play to you. Come on. So all paperwork is checked and stamped by the Mart and we're given our lot numbers. So the sheep are then moved up to their pens by the Mart staff. And the next job is sorting them out. Each pen is for your pre-assigned lot numbers. So the next job is sort them out using the colour coding that we done at home in the shed. It's a very tough job on your own. But thanks to fellow breeders here at Fergal and Emma, they offered to give me a hand. Quite tough work if you tackle this one on your own now. So they worked the gates for me and it just speeded the thing up. So the number two in the operation, my cameraman and assistant and actually my father-in-law, Robbie, has just arrived to give me a hand for probably the most tedious part of the day, sticking on these numbers. So all 85 sheep I have entered in the sale receive one of these stickers on their back. So stuck on using Bostic. So Robbie's just giving me a hand here. He's giving me the proper uh, numbers to assign to each sheep. Again, we're using the color coding system to make sure we're putting the right numbers on the right sheep. So quite a bit of work on this. So fair play to him, he's giving me a hand. So we we'll rattle through this uh, before any potential buyers come to look at the sheep so they know which lot numbers to mark in the catalogue. Now I hope it's not too noisy, that's all the numbers stuck on the sheep. Tedious job, quite sticky, you'll see I had the gloves on for that job, uh, the latex gloves. It's very sticky with that boss stick. Uh, but that's all my sheep numbered, so they're all in lots with a number on their back. So that's handy for the mark star, pulling them out for the sale. So part of the sale is a show where we show off our rams. So each breeder picks their best ram from their pen. Today they're judged by George Caldwell, who's a prominent breeder from Northern Ireland. So he's just checking some teeth here. All sheep are physically inspected. Legs and feet also particular importance because these sheep, these rams in particular, will be for breeding, producing breeding females. So they must be structurally correct above all else. So it was quite a nice class this to rank, at least in the top three. It lays down a marker for potential buyers that your stock are of pretty good quality. So I've never had any success in a show at a sale before. Could this be the lucky day? So one last look at the front. Not an enviable job. I've done it in the past. It can be tricky and everybody has a different opinion on what's a really good sheep. But on this particular day, the judge's opinion matters. So here I am extremely proud to have won first first place with my hog ram. It's nice to receive recognition from fellow breeders here. A very proud moment, it's the first time I've ever won in a sale show. Proud moment, very happy man here. My fellow breeders here head back to their pens. So the next job is for me to head up and get a few photographs taken. Now I'm just about to go in here with my pen of five hoggets. Here they are, I won fifth prize with them. Not sure if that's going to do much for me. Trade is good. Let's have a look. So the first job is ask the auctioneer to announce that my sheep have been vaccinated against Toxo and Enzo and they are on the Heptavac P program. Every little helps. So not every seller enters the ring like this, but most of us do. It's a good way of letting potential buyers know who they're buying the sheep off. Let's people know also that you're willing to stand over your sheep. You're proud of them. You'll see the sheep here exit after being sold through this alleyway on the left and they enter the ring here from the right. So here we are, next lot in. This is my second lot for sale here. 
the trade is good here you'll see my first lot sold at 300 and the price is dropping steadily a few quid per pen but this is exceptionally good money to get 300 per head very happy with that so the price drops off steadily which is fine we're into probably lesser sheep less fancy sheep now a little bit smaller the price drops off finishes up at 175 euro per head for my bottom pen but look they're probably not the fanciest sheep in the world but they should do a good job for some commercial farmer so next is on to the old lambs so this pen won second in the show and we finish up at 170 for these quite happy with that and there's no problem selling all my old lambs at that second pen of five in finished at 145 still good money for lambs so on to the big boys here rams next this will be interesting so trade has been sticky in the sale up to this point not many rams topping 500 not a hugely exciting trade for rams but usually the case it's more a female sale so this lad slow to get going but interestingly now he is a good sheep he's quite a nice sheep now i didn't show this dad because he's a little bit harder to hold he's a bit flighty and i actually fancied the other dad a little bit more but this ram tops out eventually he gets there slow and steady wins the race but eventually he gets there finishes up at 1360 which is my best price ever for a ram in a sale very happy with that so my next ram in is the first prize winner in the show so the rosette should help sell him should always add a little bit of a premium to him in the sale i suppose part of the reason for showing this particular sheep is he is from a homebred ram or tub so that means it's a ram that I bred myself. That's his breeding. So he's, he opens at 700 euro, which is a nice start. And he eventually finishes up at 1140. Not the same money as the last sheep, but still a very good price. My second best price for a sheep in the sale. So very happy with that. So my next sheep in is a good sheep. He's a half brother to the first ram, similar looking sheep. He finishes up at 710 euro, which is a very good price. Next sheep in, you'll see here, he had maggots at one stage, didn't sell, ended up selling them outside the ring for 500 to an underbidder on the first ram, so finished up not too bad. So this last ram, not that fancy. He finishes up at 400 euro. So these are the two rams that I bought in the sale. Uh, let me know what you think of them in the comments. It'd be great to hear from you. So, payday at last. Go and pay some long overdue bills. Happy days. Uh, all the hard work has finally paid off. Very successful day. I'm very happy. Very proud too, it's great to have a successful day like this. So there we go, champion, first prize in the Rams, top price in the Rams, top price in the old lambs, second highest price in the Howard Joe's. Very successful day. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a like, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.